Hi, I'm Sari Siviatha Bennett, your host of the Dallas Express podcast. In today's episode, we'll take a deep dive into the world of artificial intelligence with Steve Kennard Jr., president of the AI Innovation Association. Later, we'll gear up for World Chocolate Day with a visit to Chocolate Secrets, a gourmet chocolate and wine cafe on Oak Lawn. Thank you for joining us. As president of the Artificial Intelligence Association in Dallas, what measures can be taken to ensure that AI systems are developed and used in ways that protect and benefit humanity? I know that's a loaded one, <laughs> but do <laughs> sure. your best if you no, can. No, it's, it's, um, I think it's top of mind for a lot of people. Here's our conviction is that no one group of people, government, company, or billionaire should exert centralized control over AI in a way that's not transparent. That to me, and in our view, is the primary source of, of all of these other risks. And so I think often there's a, there's a rush to enter the world of almost sci-fi of this is gonna become a Terminator and it's coming to get us. And that's not uncommon, that's every disruptive economy. People's imaginations fly to these sort of um, extremes. And so nothing's new there. But what I think is unique is that AI isn't something that's going to be optional. I think most people are seeing that. It's going to be on every phone. It's going to be in every car. It's going to be a part of every media company. And I think that largely that could be a good thing. I'm an optimist by default. I, I consider myself a technology optimist. But the threat is real of centralized control. And I think that is the greatest risk here. I mean, you were here just running a few minutes behind because you went to, I guess it was a field hearing is what they called it, where the new bipartisan bill, the Take It Down Act, I guess there was some type of hearing at the University of North Texas at Dallas. That's right. right. And would you tell us a little bit about your takeaways from that event? It was, and my apologies again for being late, but it was worth it. No, um, yeah, it's this was a hearing at, at the UNT Dallas yep. campus. Yep and was really a part of the Commerce Committee within the Senate. Mm -hmm. uh, and our Senator Ted Cruz mm -hmm. is on that mm -hmm. committee. And so that was kind of the entity hosting uh -huh. it. But more importantly, the, the, the purpose of the hearing was to allow for testimony around a piece of legislation that Senator Cruz has co-authored and importantly is co-sponsored by a total of 14 now bipartisan U.S. senators from across the country. That's great. And in this day and age, I think that's remarkable mm -hmm. and is a great sign of, of kind of the groundswell for support. And the focus of the bill, it's, it's taken on this moniker, the Take It Down mm -hmm. Act. And it is focused on the, the disturbing uh, rise of deep fake uh, attacks, really, is the only way to describe Non-consensual, sexual. That's right. Non-consensual, yeah. uh, intimate imagery, I think yep. there is, is what they've Especially come up with. NCII is, yes, uh, yes, is yes, the yes, term yes, now. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and it, it overwhelmingly, we have seen, is, is targeting women and most disturbingly teenage Young girls. girls. Young, Young girls. Young girls. Uh, and a, a, as a father to a daughter, it's, it's deeply disturbing. Uh -huh. And there were a number of testimonies there that were really moving, frankly, but one that I have to highlight was from a young woman, inc incredibly brave, that, that told her story from right here in Texas um, about uh, harmless pictures that she had posted of, of her friends at, of at, at a gathering yep. um, on, on X, Y, or Z social media platform. And a boy in her class, um, for, for reasons I can't possibly understand, took those pictures and then used an AI tool that, uh, that they said had actually been provided through um, uh, Google was, was, was providing that tool. Um, and was able to make very lifelike. And the advancement of these tools is remarkable in that it doesn't, it, it, it's not, and they stress this, it's not that they took a picture of her face and like pasted it on yep. some other pornographic image. It looked disturbingly and shockingly real yep. and went viral throughout this girl's school. And I just, I, I can't imagine that. Yep. I can't imagine that. And what, what made it even worse was the reality that they had to face twofold. First, that there was no regulation in place through which the school could expel the perpetrator of this crime, which is just shocking. Uh, and so they had no recourse through the school itself, mm -hmm. went to the school board meeting, all of that. Nothing they could do. Uh, and then secondarily, they had identified most egregiously uh, Snapchat, had these pictures going 
viral, mm -hmm. and they were contacting Snapchat and saying, th these, you know, these are pictures of a 14-year-old of a girl, mm -hmm. uh, and they could not get them to take it down. And over a series of months, escalated and escalated, and then finally got uh, Senator Cruz's office involved. Mm -hmm. And then they take them down right away. Yep. And what that shows is they're perfectly capable. Mm -hmm. They're perfectly aware of what's going on, and we have to make a change. What I'll highlight about that bill that, that our association is very much supporting is also that it, it is short and targeted. Mm -hmm. That's important too. I think we live in a time now where all of a sudden you have two and three hundred page bill. Everything's an omnibus. Yep. It yep. covers 25 different issues yep. and it's pork barrel this and building a bridge to nowhere. None of that. None of that in this bill. It is about 14 pages. You can find it on Senator Cruz's website. I want to discuss a little bit more about how AI, as you're aware of it, could potentially be utilized by our police department to address crime and improve different types of staffing shortages mm -hmm. and overall efficiency in their departments? Yeah, so I think the first way to approach that is to highlight the approach that the state of Texas yep. is taking right now, which I think is the right one. In the last legislative session, a law was passed to create an AI advisory mm -hmm. council. Um, at the state level. Yep. And they have started to hold hearings. I've gone to a few of them in Austin. And so the first step is to have these kinds of hearings in public. Mm -hmm. And the focus of that council is precisely to invite representatives across government entities mm -hmm. to start to provide testimony of how they view AI, are they using it, in what ways, and how is that developing. And the way that I can broadly characterize those discussions from what I've seen firsthand is frankly reassuring that most government entities are not rushing into this, not, n no one is in a hurry to implement AI in some kind of decision-making uh, position Capacity, yep. where we've seen obvious human bias mm -hmm. um, in these models. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, broadly our institutions are well aware of that and and the real risks that uh, if, if human bias has been a part of the training of the model, then you're basically codifying bias. <laughs> so anytime that, that we start to get into a discussion around policing, I think it's important to, to establish these first principles. Yep. Move, move slow and cautiously, and always from a privacy first standpoint, mm -hmm. because law enforcement and government is dealing with a lot of very, very sensitive information That's right. from people. So with your background in Bitcoin mining and your insights into these digital currencies, how do you envision CBDC or some, a centralized bank digital currency becoming a mainstream form of e-commerce or commerce in general? I believe it's here. I know it's gonna happen in a few years. Those are my beliefs, yep. but I'm very interested in what yours are. There are a few things here that I think are undeniable, and you touched on the first one, and that is the economy, our lives, but certainly the economy, is getting more and more digital, mm -hmm. if not digitally native, if not 100% digital, because now we're seeing places that even don't want to accept cash, which I oppose that. If our only way to settle peer-to-peer, -peer, that you and I can settle without a counterparty, is through cash, and we move to a digital economy, then what does that mean? It means that you've lost what I consider to be a right, which is a willing buyer and seller should be able to come to an agreement and settle peer to peer without having to go through a counterparty, whether it's the government or a bank. Mm -hmm. You know, now if the bank facilitates that and provides a value added service, great. You know, use that by consenting to it, but not by default. It's very interesting to me to see the lead for innovation in the digital dollar occurring everywhere except the United States. We are lagging behind significantly, unfortunately, with yep. respect to this type of technology. I mean, the digital yuan, for example, China is light years ahead of us with respect to this, but then it's also terrifying because they are also beholden to the oligopoly that is big tech in yep. China. And Absolutely. all the China, Chinese government has to do is go to their social score. Right. Their, what is it? The pop score, POP score, something. That's the first time I've heard that. Yeah. yeah and then, <laughs> so if for whatever reason, the Chinese government is unhappy, they just point straight down right. to that CCP score. It's a CCP score. It's a social score. And if the Chinese government deems them a threat, they, they're not able to transact. 
it, it's the it's a real world. It's like Orwell going from fiction to reality. Absolutely. It's we're living in a in a fascinating time, really. It is a fascinating time. It's also terrifying. I remember when I was young, <laughs> um, people talking about a chip, right? Saying, "Oh, a chip will be used to control you, and if you do not use that chip or the science that comes along with it, then you will not be able to engage in commerce." Right. And I firmly believe that our cell phones are that chip. I mean, we are so tethered to Apple, to Google, in every capacity yep. in our lives. To de-Google any part of your life is such a chore. Yeah. And I know some people that actually do it, but I am, I'm certainly tethered to both of those systems. What is your long-term vision for the role of AI in our society and how can we work towards the vision while addressing current challenges? I would shortly describe my outlook as evolve, not replace. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are going down a path of saying, uh, this is a threat to my job, or it's, it's going to you know, take over the police force or something like that. And, and I see it as an, an evolution, an opportunity for, for people to disrupt a lot of existing systems that can be made a lot more efficient. The particular example I wanna give, I think one of the biggest areas of disruption, I think I'm, I'm, I'm prepared to say it's scary as a parent, uh, is in education. You know, the typical way that, that, that children were brought up in a community was uh, highly personalized, often in a, in a one-room schoolhouse. Mm -hmm. And we've gotten really far away from that. Mm -hmm. And I think, w whatever your positions are broadly on education, I, I hope there's a broad recognition that one size fits all is not good. Mm -hmm. And uh, a, a lot of our system has gone down that, that route and the results have been, I think, predictable from that, that sort of approach. And so we are seeing uh, an evolution right now. You know, one of the one of the largest providers of curriculum to our school systems is uh, Khan Academy. A lot of people might be familiar with it, and they're rolling out an AI tutor now. Um, we are they really? They have an AI tutor uh, that I haven't tried myself. The purpose of it is to give personalized feedback. And here's what I think is important, not the answer. That's so you right. ask it something, exactly. you know, what's two plus two? It's not yep. going to tell you four. It's going to say, well, do you know how to do one plus one? Mm -hmm. Start there and break it down and then build back up to, 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 to actually tutor you. That's right. Does that make sense? And then by collecting that data over time, be able to personalize to the experiences to, to whatever a particular child needs. I think the disruption that that could, that could make, particularly in special education, is extremely promising. Mm -hmm. But there's a can of worms there too, of of, course. of the bias of what's what's what are the values of that from a moral perspective. The other example I'll give: we we had a company called My Lesson Pal. It's a Texan that presented on our last member call for AI Innovation Association, and just built an AI-powered tool that helps teachers with lesson planning. Which my wife was a teacher and. I saw through that that lesson oh, planning. Oh, I love that. It can be brutal for teachers. Oh, for sure. And so this is a way to automate that a little bit. They can share it and, and just reduce the just the headache mm -hmm. of, of constantly doing that. So you see that kind of low hanging fruit and it's like this is just it's a simple way to like make your life a little bit better. Yes. Right? Can you tell us a little bit about what you want to leave with? Because you are running for political office. Yeah. Would you mind telling us a little bit about what you're running for? and what changes you hope to implement. I am running for state representative in mm -hmm. House District 70, uh -huh. uh, which, is, which is here in the Dallas area, uh, primarily in Plano and Collin County. It's helpful for us to have a legislature with more diverse views and backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And as more of an entrepreneur, more, someone who's a little more tech forward, I, I don't think that viewpoint <laughs> is widely represented. It's not. Uh, so in, in a professional capacity, in terms of like tech, technological optimism, yep. I think there's an opportunity for us to have that more effectively represented. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what I've seen in our communities just from a law and order standpoint of what, what I really don't consider partisan issues, we, we shouldn't want broadly you know, criminals running right. loose. Oh my gosh, yes. Um, so shockingly, we, we've seen an unbelievable spike in fentanyl drugs in our schools. And, and I, I think that we should rally around our first responders and our law enforcement and our border agents yep. and, and fix that. Yep. Um, and so I saw an opportunity to bring that from a perspective of someone who I was born and raised in Dallas. This is my home. I'm not yep. leaving. I'm fighting for it. 
and, and people like that message, and I'm, I'm blessed to be in this position to, to be running for that in the, in the general election. It's an opportunity for me as well with, with, within my, my professional work to kind of uh, walk the walk when I tell people you got to get more involved. That's right. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I this appreciate was, this it, This was Steve. wonderful. I, I really do appreciate it. Get ready to say goodbye to your summer diet and satisfy your sweet tooth. We're heading to Chocolate Secrets to celebrate World Chocolate Day. This unique cafe is one of my favorites among the sweet spots in Dallas. So keep an eye out for it the next time you're driving down Oak Lawn. So I love it here. My kids love it here. And I've bought a whole bunch of things here before, like jewelry that you all yeah, feature yeah. from the artisans. Fun, right? uh, that's why I was like, anything where I can feature local community things, uh -huh, and I, it's absolutely. just so special. Cheers. Mm. I love the Texas stuff. Stop with the little Chanel. Oh my God, and the heels. <gasps> oh my God, these are so cute. Oh, Money always tells me, he's like, do you know what you do when you go to these <laughs> restaurants? Because <laughs> I have like a mile long drink order. I'm a bad influence. No, you're not. Oh, this, this looks heavenly. This Why looks do you like... think that you're a bad influence? Oh, because um, whenever we get together, we have a lot of fun. So <laughs> 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 you know, Neither of us should be doing this right now. <laughs> yeah. Yes, on a Thursday. Oh, oh so you, you're just wanting a, to pull that out. <laughs> <laughs> Most of my like close friends have big personalities. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. yeah you, you. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, we know. Yeah. What are we going to do oh, first? This side or Even that these side? little half pieces look I know. big. Heaven? Hmm. Mmm. Mmm. That's good. It's just very rich. It's rich. Okay, this next one is yeah. the I kind of want to eat that, but I know spice. I need a... Texas spice. Mm. <laughs> There's a snack. Mm. I love mm. it. Oh, the flavors keep coming. They keep coming. That one is that bomb. Is so oh my gosh, it just keeps coming. That is so good. Yeah. Mm. It's like hitting, it's right. hitting. Um, yes, it's yes, three yes. chocolates, yes, it's gonna be rich. Okay. But then we'll finish it with, um, we'll go to the vanilla bean to like bring some light. It's good. You're like, not. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> that Texas spice. <laughs> it's my number one. Yeah, it's my number That's one. Far. I know. Mm -mm. It's good. I like it. It's, That's the thing, is, it's just good. It's, it's just it's as yum. That's good. Mm. What's the the alcohol in it? There's no alcohol. I think it is. <laughs> I think there is. <laughs> I, I, I just took a swig of my champagne. <laughs> oh, rum. It tastes no rum. Yeah, there's no rum. I mean, there's rum, but it's just not noticeable. I probably would have liked it to come a little further. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I swear, I think it's because I, I just do. took, like, I oh, tasted yeah. some of this, and I'm like, I taste nothing. Yeah, I didn't taste it either, but that's okay. All right, this is the ancho. Mm. I'm waiting. That's good. That's real good. I'm not a dark chocolate person normally. I'm a milk chocolate person, sadly. Yeah, so many. I wish I was a dark chocolate person. Why is that? So much better for you. Oh. Mm -hmm. I love all chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting the heat. The I Texas was spice. Yeah, is Texas my spice is the best. My winner. My winner. winner oh, here's the heat. Dinner. A little bit. A little. A little bit. Not as much as the Texas, which I loved. Me too. Loved it. Me too.